Welcome to Watercolor Skies, and here are four little references for this class, and we're going to start with early morning. And go ahead and just get a little practice sheet, and for the first color, I'm mixing my warm blue, my cool blue, so French ultramarine, and some cerulean, and I'll just lay down a little bit of blue, add some water, and then mix up a little bit of peach with that Sennelier Yellow Deep and some Rose Matter Lake. And while that's still wet, we're going to slash into it with some more of that orangey-peachy mixture. Right through there. And then the last part, we mix in some purple, and the purple goes on the bottom side of the orange clouds. So all these things need to be done while it's wet and you need to move quickly and don't rub into the paint, otherwise you'll get gray muddy colors. Now let's start with the larger version. And you see I'm on an angle and I've got that nice bead. You just need enough water in your mix to get that bead flowing. And the first layer I put down is blue, and then I start just adding more and more water to the mix to lighten it. And then clean off my brush well and mix up some of my peachy orange color. And you see how I'm just touching the bottom of the blue, I'm not rubbing into it, and that keeps my color from becoming gray. And I also adjust the tilt of my angle as I'm coming down so that it can flow faster if I want it to. Put my quick little slashes through there. I'll mix up some purple. And then pull that down. So be careful not to touch it too much. You want to try to get it just in one or two tries and then let it dry. So on this one, I wanted to give this one a second try and I went ahead and did just one more practice here. So mixing both the blues and getting more and more water to my mix. And now the peach. So I've got not too much yellow to keep it a soft peachy color. Quickly, I'm running my little slashes of orange through there. And now for the purples. So we are having a very dry and warm day today, so everything is drying very quickly, and the trick is to just move fast and don't overthink it. So on this one, since it started drying a little quickly, you see I have some blossoms forming in the top, which I didn't really care for. So in order to fix that problem, what I'm going to do is just blow dry this one and speed dry it all the way. And then I flip it upside down, and with just a clean brush with just water, I'm going to pull down a glaze of just water and fix that little blossom at the end.
there, I'm pulling everything down, and right at the end, everything smooths out beautifully. And there you go. Next is our sunset, and for this, it's similar to the early morning, but the colors are a bit more intense. So rather than starting with just blue, I'm going to make a purple mix. And it is more on the blue side, so it's a cooler purple. If you have it more on the red side, it's going to be a warmer purple, and we want it to be cooler and a little more gray. It's there. Dashed in a little extra blue and then went to the water. And I've got that peachy orange at the bottom, but it's a little more intense down here on the sunset one. And then with just some straight rows, I'm going to dash those bright rose touches, light popping through the clouds there. And that's pretty much it for the sunset. Now we'll do the large scale version. So we don't want to overwork things and we want to keep that sense of looseness so we're not matching the photo exactly. It's just getting the feel of a sunset. So I got my deep dark purple on the top. And on this one, since it's bigger, I want to have some patches of bright pink coming through with a gray, so I'm going to keep a little bit of some open space in here. Now you see when I come in with the rose, I get those patches where the pink has just not been diluted by the purple, and so you get that really bright pink coming through. And then I go to water. And then the oranges. And then finish with the purple again. And I'll just dash in a couple of extra little darker clouds here at the bottom. And then let that dry, and that is a sunset. Next, we have our stormy cloud day. Uh, for the practice, I just cleaned up all of the remaining paint that was floating around in my tray and got this nice pretty gray at the end. So I'll start with just a wash of gray and then add that peach color at the bottom, followed by a touch of more gray, and then we're going to put in some dark storm clouds. So you need the mix to be less watery and to make that purple become more of a gray you just add a bit of yellow. Now we got that dark storm cloud that will float onto the top there. Right, so there's our little practice, and now we'll do the large scale one. So I've got the gray a little darker at the top, and then I switch to just water as I pull it down. And now I need that beautiful peach beam of light coming through.
and then some soft gray at the bottom. Uh, for this larger one, I found it was easier to dry it completely after this stage, and then come back and put the cloud on top. Now the key for this part is to make sure you have a big enough batch of that dark gray because you're going to have to switch from the gray to the water pretty quickly. So you see how thick and juicy this is going on. And I'm just skipping a couple little holes which I will connect with water. There we go. And I'm just going to let this color all spill down the page now just switching to water. And there you go. Now you've got that big stormy cloud. That patch of bright light popping through at the bottom. Okay, now for the sunny day, I just have this little quick practice for this one. So we're starting with the blue mix, cooler blue on the top, French ultramarine, and putting some big gaps in it for where the clouds are, and go to the warmer cerulean blue underneath, and then a very pale dirty yellow comes in at the bottom. And that creates your little haze in the clouds. So I'm just softening the edges on these clouds to give them a nice little fuzzy look and yellow at the bottom for the haze, and that is your sunny day sky. Now we're just going to come back. We only had time to add land on a couple of these because our class ran over a little bit today. So first thing I'm going to do is put down the background mountain, and that's pretty much the same purple color as the cloud, but I spritzed it with water because since I let it dry in between, that line felt a little bit too heavy, and it's a faraway mountain, so it needs to be soft. So I'm going to pull down a bit of a road here. Now I'm going to mix up some greens. So with the French Ultra, the Marine, and the yellow, you get a pretty nice sort of olive green, and the heavier on the blue, will make it cooler. So I start with the cool blue-green. And on this side over here, I'm letting it get a little bit lighter so it'll be balancing with the other light side and everything is kind of yin and yang over here. So this side will be darker in contrast. I'm matching with the dark cloud on the opposite side and kind of lost my road a little bit so I'm going to pull some of that road back out. So you got a nice sense of distance there by having uh, the perspective of the road going back and getting smaller as it's farther away. And with a relatively dry brush, I'm just going to scrape on the little details here by adding some shrubs on the side of the road. And lightly scraping on like trees. Making sure they're nice and broken up. You don't want them to be too heavy. Need plenty of little air holes.
Then I'm having fewer trees on the other side. I'm just going to create a nice sense of balance here. And these ones that are a little more in the foreground, I'll give them some drop shadows. Not too dark since it's not a bright sunny day. And gently I'll add in a couple of little power line poles. And for perspective, just make sure they're getting smaller as they go away. So now, swapping out, we're going to go back to our morning. We'll add some land into the morning. So again, for the far away distant land, it's kind of just that purple color. And I'm just adding a couple little bumps here and there to be some far away distant trees. And then green right into that purple. And for the middle ground green, I have a little bit more yellow in it, and the foreground green, I'm adding the more blue mix to get that sense of distance. All right, so we let that dry, and now, wherever there's something I don't really like, I just put a tree on there. And we'll give them some shadows. So again on this one, I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sense of balance, adding some trees to both sides. Once you feel like you've got enough spaced out throughout your picture in there, then go ahead and call it a day, and I will see you guys back for more next week.